Olight is back with their first sale of 2024. And we are gonna talk about one of their new products that they are releasing in this sale. We're gonna do a comparison in addition to doing a brief overview. And we're also going to discuss how Olight has changed their sales structure for 2024 and what you should be made aware of. So with that, let's get started. Now, full disclosure, I've actually known about this flashlight since fan day in 2023, where I got to put my hands on the light in the first place. And I was already impressed then. They have made some slight improvements though that I think are worth noting. Now, I specifically wanna showcase it next to two different flashlights, the Seeker 3 uh, S, I'm sorry, not the Seeker 3, the Warrior 3 S and the Warrior X Turbo. Now, some people have compared it to the Javelot series, which is quite a bit longer. I think this actually makes a little bit more sense and kind of shows where this light kind of fits. On one hand, we have the Warrior 3S, which is a very compact 21700, and I know a lot of people who use this as their dedicated work light. This kind of falls in the same functionality, but gives you more reach versus a wider beam pattern. I'm not quite sure from a work standpoint, which one you will prefer, but just know that this can do basically everything this can do. It just has a lot more reach instead of a wider beam, which is where we're gonna talk about lumens versus candela for just a second. If you think about water coming out of a pipe, right, that's three inches in diameter or whatever, it comes out with a lot of water, but not necessarily with a lot of pressure. Like it's not gonna come out and go a long distance. Where on the other hand, if you have a power washer, the pressure in there is so high and it's such a fine beam, it actually goes a lot further and has a lot more power. That's essentially what we're getting with the Javelot. At 134,000 candela, which is very hard to put into uh, explanation, this thing is gonna reach out and touch things at 750 meters. That is no joke. That is a serious searchlight that can fit very easily on your person. Now, I am not gonna cover beam patterns and some of these other things in this review. This is more of an overview talking about who this light is for. If you'd like to see that information, I'm actually gonna highly recommend checking out the video that's linked down below to Prepared Guy, who goes so in depth and does such a good job, I could not top it. So please go check him out and give him a follow while you're at it, because he does a great job. Now, this light, I have not found an aspect that I didn't like it in, whether it was home defense light, walking around the middle of the night on uh, um, taking out your dog, or leaving it in your car as a car light mounted in its sheath, or just about anything. I, I honestly am still find, trying to find an, a situation where this light doesn't work. If I were to be, if I were to be really nitpicky, the only thing it doesn't do well is like working on a project, you kind of want something that is going to be floodier and potentially a high CRI, like a headlamp. But other than that, it, it pretty much covers like way more than I expected. And then to top it all off, I carried it with the pocket clip in my left pocket for a number of days and I found myself not really noticing it much more than I would the Warrior 3S, which surprises me because the difference in head size, you would expect it to really dig in and be uncomfortable, but it really wasn't. And that was one of the biggest surprises of this light. Now, I'm gonna briefly post what you're looking for as far as output and run times right here so you can see when they drop, etc. And I'm gonna talk about it in the context of comparisons. What makes this light, I think, so good is not necessarily what it can accomplish on turbo, but on high mode at 650 lumens, this thing lasts for 170 minutes before dropping down to around 250 lumens. That's insane. What they have done with this light and with these new um, LEDs is kind of amazing. They've gotten so efficient. And at the set of 15 lumen mode, which is the low, it will run for seven and a half days, seven and a half days on 15 lumens. And this is quite a bit more light than you would expect uh, from 15 lumens, by the way, because of the high candela ratio. Um, that's incredible. 72 days, in fact, 
on the moonlight mode, which you can access from the side switch. That's a half lumen. This will run for 72 days straight. That's craziness. Just, they have made these so efficient. I don't know what they're doing, but they're doing a really, really good job. Now on its turbo, and we'll talk about that briefly, you'll notice that it drops from that highest output at around that two minute mark. One of the consequences that you happen when you go from a larger head to a smaller one is there's less aluminum to actually take the heat and dissipate it. So you're going to be limited on how long it will run at its maximum output based purely on heat distribution. And according to Prepared Guy, which you can watch his video on the heat itself, this thing will reach somewhere in the 115 degrees Fahrenheit range. Not that bad, honestly, when it comes to reaching its maximum heat. So all overall pretty impressive, even at its turbo, it will then drop down to 650 lumens and that'll run for 155 minutes. Overall outputs are great. And then functionality speaking, let's talk about tail switch, side switch. So it's the exact same style of switch that you will get on something like the um, Warrior Mini. So this is the new upgrade, except you'll notice a little bit of a difference. This is designed to take a remote switch and you can actually buy it with both a Picatinny rail and a remote switch that will work on the end of this, giving you potential light for a weapons platform as well. Once again, just adding to its overall versatility. Now the Warrior 3S actually has its own version of a remote switch. You can do that as well, but I think this might actually do the job a little bit better. Um, and that, that is sort of a constant thing. But to be fair, the Warrior 3S has been around a lot longer and it's a little bit older technology. It is also, however, a little bit different when it comes to output because it's making a beam that is otherwise just really spread out versus concentrated. So big difference between that and what you see over here. When you zoom out a little bit on both, you can really see the difference between the two lights. Now, beyond that, there are other flashlights that might be worth considering. And I unfortunately am missing three of them. The Perrin, which is a right angle flashlight, also powered by a 21700. I'm missing the uh, Baton 3 Pro Max, which is only because it's already sent in a package to go to demo days. And the brand new Warrior 4. Now the Warrior 4 is probably the one I miss the most in this comparison and maybe I'll do that at a later time, but I don't think that it's necessarily going to beat this light, mostly because of how compact it is. And this is where I'm gonna bring in the sheaths again. So it comes with this sheath, which is a decent option. But what I found is that it's actually small enough, genuinely, that I can actually put it into a holster that I carry on a regular basis. Now we're pushing the limits of what this sheath can do, and if I really wanted to, I could probably get it to conform to the light even deeper in so that it would sit even nicer. But this is not something I would say is possible with something like the Warrior 4. Even though the Warrior 4 has some advantages, like having a Type-C port under the collar, I think this kind of falls into a different category, closer to what you have over here. Now, what we do have is a comparison to both the Seeker 4 Pro and the Seeker 4. Now the Seeker 4, these are all side switch flashlights, have a type C port or a magnetic tail. And this is the thing that I really wanted to bring up. The Seeker 4 Pro has one of my favorite features, which is that the sheath itself also can charge the light. I love this feature. And if you take that same sheath and you load it up with the Jabalot, you could have one of the best combinations available. The only issue that I see, because it does charge it, is that there's a little bit more movement than I would like. Now the magnet that's part of the charger is enough to kind of hold it in, but you know, it's not really very strong. What you can do though, is you can buy this separately. And if that's the only light you have, you could definitely heat form this to actually hold on to the jab a lot. And that's actually what I'm going to be doing because I think this light might be the jack of all trades kind of situation where I, I think it, I don't say it obsoletes these other lights, but it just feels like it gives me a ton of versatility. Now, of course, I think that when it comes to having a floody beam, I don't think it necessarily replaces those lights because it's designed to be more concentrated. But overall, it's an incredible light. 
Uh, that's basically where I'm going to leave it here on the Javelot. It's, if you haven't yet made a decision from all the larger flashlights, this might be the ultimate hybrid between everything that they have available right now. Now, with that, let me say this. Um, they have changed the format of how they are doing sales. Now, first of all, there's going to be fewer sales this year for Olight. But the other thing that I noticed and I didn't know about till I saw it today is that they are not showing people the price that you can get by being a member until after you sign up. And that's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to tell it, say is not a great idea for Olay. I wish they hadn't done that because it used to be that you would see the sale price, you would see a countdown timer, and you would feel excited that you were there present when the sale was happening and you were going to get this great deal. Now, it's not apparent what the prices are at all. So there are people who are just going to lose interest. And there were still plenty of people who were buying Olights because the sale was good that didn't want to participate in their loyalty program. Now, the loyalty program is great. I will tell you this. But asking someone to trust you up front first before they are able to prove that the product is good, that's kind of a reversed order, I think. Now, it's not uncommon and it's something that a lot of companies are doing, but for the longest time, Olight wasn't doing that. And I think that a lot of people are going to notice the difference. So I'm hoping in the future that at the very minimum, they make apparent what the prices are to absolutely everyone who shows up on the website, whether they are a member or not so that they can make informed decisions on whether they want to buy it or not. Because my, my guess is they're going to lose a lot of traffic just by having people see it, see only the original price, and that's going to be all she wrote. Uh, I, I don't want to go any more in depth. I'm actually curious to see how people feel about this subject and Olight in general down in the comments. I, I'm not sure if the current system and the amount of sales that they have is going to actually be grateful, you know, good for them over the course of the year, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm very interested in hearing the opinions of everyone else who has participated with them in the past. Yeah, that's pretty much where I'm going to leave it today. Simply put, the Javelot is one of the better flashlights that you can possibly buy from Olight right now, and especially combined with one of their charging sheets that you can then modify, which is here's a vertical and here's a horizontal one. I think that this pairing right here could be one of the best. Now I will leave a link to where you can get these directly from Olight's website, because they, they're kind of hard to find, just search sheath in, um, in the search box. But uh, yeah, these are awesome. Uh, these are awesome flashlights. I definitely think that it's, a great tool. I think it's going to be something people are going to really enjoy. It has all the functionality of those other flashlights. Of course, it has lockout if you want it, but it kind of defeats the purpose. And now that it has that wide head, it's actually even harder to accidentally press the side switch, especially because since past generations, they have also made it more flush, and now it is a metal switch versus a rubberized one. Yeah, I, I didn't know we were going to come back to this, but yeah, that's kind of where I feel about the Javelot. It's a phenomenal flashlight, and this is probably a great time to get it. I will show you the price here if I didn't already do so, and uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. So, as always, thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk again soon.